Welcome. Hey, my name is Chris, aka Lou Bagel of Lou Bagel Industries, and welcome to my construct tutorial on when to use functions. There is a written version of this tutorial on my website, which you can find in the link in the description. Also, this is the first construct tutorial I've made in a while, so feel free to leave any feedback. That's also the reason why I picked a simple topic. While I do a quick introduction, I'm showing in the background a time lapse of setting up the example project. I hope it isn't distracting, but I don't want this to feel like a PowerPoint presentation and thought it might help orient you a bit when we jump into that example. First off, who is this tutorial for? If you have used functions, whether in Construct or programming elsewhere, this isn't for you. This tutorial is for beginner or immediate intermediate Construct users that have not used functions yet. Also, it might not be for absolute beginners as I'll only focus on the functions and not explain every aspect of everything that I'm doing. We will definitely get into how to use functions, but first I want to hit on when to use functions. The word to remember is DRY. It is actually an acronym for don't repeat yourself. If you find yourself using the same sequence of events multiple times, that is something a function can help with. This includes copy and pasting chunks of events. Even though it can be quick and easy to just copy and paste some events, there are some drawbacks that come from that, which we will demonstrate with an example, and then show the benefits of using a function instead. Now let's talk about this example project. It's a really simple project, but I want you to focus on the score text in the upper right corner. When the player, which is the green square, collides with a power up, which is a blue square, the score is increased by 50. When I click the mouse, the player fires a projectile and it hits the enemy, which is the red square, the score is increased by 100. So there are two ways to increase the score, but I'm also setting the score text at the start of the layout just to show score colon zero, and therefore three times in the events I'm setting the score. Naturally, after setting up the event to set the text content to the word score followed by the number score, the next time I need to do the same thing, my instinct is just to copy and paste it. So have you spotted the issue here? Copy and pasting works just fine, at least initially, but what if you need to make a change? If you copy and pasted it twice, now you have to do the same update three times. Obviously in this project, I made the mistake on purpose, but imagine as your project starts to grow and get really big with code all over the place, or you're testing and tweaking aspects where you're constantly making changes back and forth to try to get things right, you don't wanna to have to memorize every single place that you need to make the change. Don't repeat yourself. If you wanna make a change, you should only need to change it in one place, one time. So here I simulated us changing the simple one line of code from score colon score to score colon space score to capitalize score colon space score. And obviously I didn't get it consistent across all three places. As you can see, as you're playing, the score text just looks womp wonky as it's jumping around. It's not in the end of the world, but I'm sure players would comment on it. So let's dry up this code. And to do that, we're gonna create a function. Right click the event sheet and choose add a function. Call the function whatever you want, but you wanna pick a name that describes what it does to help yourself out later on. In the function, I'm gonna move the action that is used three times into that function. The three places where it was at previously, I'm gonna call this function, which to do that, all you have to do is open up the new action prompt pick function and then find the name of your function in that bottom section. Now you can see if I need to change the capitalization or anything else here, there's only one spot to update it. To phrase that another way, if I for example wanted to change the word score to all caps, I only have to do it in this one spot and it'll be consistent. We won't have that wonky text if we forget to update it in multiple spots. Just do it one time, don't repeat yourself. Once again, this is the simplest example I could think of, but imagine creating blocks of 20 or 30 events that you need to reuse, and then you're going in later to tweak them. You don't wanna be doing that in multiple spots. This is the power of functions, but we aren't even done yet. Next, we're gonna demonstrate function parameters using the same example. So what if you're wanting to do generally the same thing or same concept, but you need things to end up a little bit different. It needs to be flexible, dynamic. You could describe it in different ways. Here we have a function to update the score text, but the only reason to do that is because the score changes. So we can take care of that with a function parameter. Let's move the action that increases the score by 100 into the function. But obviously getting a power up only increases the score by 50. That's why we need a parameter. Think of a parameter like a variable, a local variable to be specific, as it acts basically the same. So to right click the function, click add parameter, 
then name your parameter and choose the type, which the type is important to get correct, um, or else it's basically not going to work. For this one, I'm going to call the variable increase as it's the amount the score increases. And obviously, we need it to be a number, not a string or a boolean. Then I just need to edit the action to change the amount the global variable increases from 100 to the parameter we just created. Now I go back to where the function is called, double click on it, and adjust the parameter amount. With this, I can get rid of the two actions to increase the score as that's happening inside the function. In conclusion, you just got done creating your first function. I know that sometimes it seems like more work to go back and refactor your events to add functions. But to summarize, utilizing functions where applicable can increase organization, readability, and help you create dynamic and scalable code. Once you get in the habit of using functions, you will start using functions from the beginning, as in not waiting until afterwards where you go back and refactor, and you will even plan out your events with functions in mind. I have a couple more examples in the written version of the tutorial that may demonstrate this. One is a score multiplier, and the second is a function I call take damage, as I gave the enemy multiple hit points. If you can understand this function on the screen, you can see that the amount of damage is passed into the function, so that it sets up the flexibility and scalability to easily add weapons that do different amount of damage, or power-ups that increase damage. Which, since I had this set up already, I couldn't resist making a simple event that simulates a grenade or explosion, which causes 10 damage to all nearby enemies. If you want to check out a bit more about these two additional examples, take a look at the written version of the tutorial, or if you're trying to follow along with the tutorial and need to look at a specific step more closely, it might help to see that written version as well. Also, on my website, you can actually play or test out the example version of the project. Uh, it's, it's actually exported and uploaded there in the page. So thanks for watching, and please let me know any feedback. Honestly, I'm not sure if I'll make any more video tutorials or at least soon based on how long I procrastinated finishing this um, and how much time it took away from my own game development but I do like the idea of making tutorials and I do like helping people so I hope this helped a few construct developers. Take care and bagel out.